This is the first time that a statistical analysis is clearly targeted uh, faulty machines with a compelling uh, determination of statistical significance. We'd like to call our first witness, Professor Charles Stewart. Great, right answer. My name is Charles Stewart. Stewart is spelled S T E W A R T. <clears throat> professor Stewart, what is your occupation? I am professor of political science at MIT, and I am also the head of the political science department at MIT. And can you please uh, briefly describe your educational background? I received a master's degree in political science from Stanford, and I received my PhD in political science in 1985. Professor, have you taught political science at MIT ever since you got that PhD? Yes, I did. Yes, I have. Professor, have you published in peer-reviewed journals about the issues of voting machines and residual votes? Yes, I have. Your Honor, we tender Professor Stewart as an expert in voting technology, residual votes, and statistical analysis of election data. Do you have any statistical basis for believing that machine failure or machine malfunction contributed to the high undervote rate in Sarasota County this year? Um, yes, I do. And what, what is the data that you use to reach that conclusion? And can you explain what it shows? Um, yes, what I did here was I was able to, um, from the event logs, ascertain um, the days on which each of the electronic voting machines used in Sarasota County was um, prepared for use in an election. The lower x-axis we have each of the dates um, on which the, um, the machines were cleared and tested. Along the um, left-hand vertical axis we have the undervote rate in the 13th district. Each of the bubbles is the data point that corresponds with the undervote rate on that date. I have made the size of the bubble um, proportional to the number of machines that were prepared on a general day. So if a bubble, if one bubble is twice as large as another, another bubble, that means twice as many machines were reported on that. I'm sorry, were prepared on that day. So what you see is that among the uh, machines that were prepared earlier, the undervote rate is 11.8%. Uh, versus the machines prepared later, their undervote rate is 17.5%. Um, down here in the sort of bottom left hand area, there, 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 I don't actually see a bubble. Can you explain why not? Yes, those are days when um, just one machine was prepared. And what sort of undervote rates did machines prepare uh, on those days when there was not a rush generally? Um, very, very low. Well, a very, very low undervote rates um, compared to all of the other machines. Um, well, the busiest day is this bubble right here that I'm pointing to, which is on um, October 17th. Uh, what this graph also helps to illustrate is how that was also the very last day on uh, which a long series of election day machines were prepared. And immediately after that, the county went into preparing um, early voting machines. And what was the undervote rate for the machines were prepared on that busiest day? October 17th. Uh, it's approximately 10%. Professor, is the relationship between the undervote rate and the date on which the machines were prepared statistically significant? Yes, it is. And is the relationship between the undervote rate and the busyness of the date on which the machines were prepared statistically significant? Yes, it is. Given those statistically significant relationships, given that voter confusion induced by ballot design, typically affects fewer than 5% of voters. Given that the undervotes were concentrated in Jennings areas of strength, and that the excess undervote rate was about 12%, 14,000 votes, do you think there's a reasonable likelihood that machine failure altered the outcome of the selection? Um, yes, I do. No further questions, Your Honor. Here's the part that I think is critical for those watching that are getting their media from the internet, not mainstream news. They program machines, they have, they have at least a thousand of them, around a thousand, maybe 1,500 in Sarasota County. So it takes them a while to set them all up. 
they had an undervote rate on average of 11.8%. The machines after October 12th, between October 12th and November 5th, undervoted at a rate of 17.5%. Now, how do you explain that discrepancy? I don't think you can. I mean, 20% undervote on the machines that were programmed on October 17th. Wouldn't you like to know who was in the Sarasota warehouse at the Supervisor of Elections setting up these machines on October 17th? I sure would. But unfortunately, those video records are no longer available. Even though they were requested within a reasonable time, they've all been taped over. Convenient? When the citizens in Sarasota ask for the video logs of the cameras for the warehouse, apparently no law video logs exist until the 15th of November. Now that does concern me. Right off the bat, I've got some concerns when audio and video logs are not available for critical periods of time in Sarasota County. I do know that uh, there's been a very good group of volunteers that have been collecting the license tags of every vehicle that ever went to that warehouse site. Je ne veux pas travailler, je ne veux pas déjeuner, je veux seulement oublier, et puis je fume. Déjà j'ai connu le parfum de l'amour. Professionals in this field need to ensure that information is never lost, particularly information potentially vital to the security of their voting equipment. The reason that we have photographic and videography equipment at our warehouses is to make sure we can guarantee that the chain of custody is maintained. 